Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Marvin Harrison Jr. He's the consensus best wide receiver in the draft. Obviously, everybody knows the name, the son of the great Marvin Harrison, who had all those great years for the Indianapolis Colts playing with Peyton Manning. Uh, a little bit about Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously number 18 from Ohio State. Uh, he was a baby on that great Ohio State receiving class that had Garrett Wilson, um, JSN and Chris Olave. He was a freshman that year. They, they kind of broke out. But uh, he's 6'4", 205. Some of his accomplishments, he's a Belinda Call finalist in 2022, uh, unanimous first team All-American in 2023, uh, first team Big Ten in 2023, a Heisman finalist in 2023, and he was the Belinda Call winner in 2023 also. Uh, his strengths, a new ones route one runner, incredible body control, uh, he can block when he wants to. <laughs> He's a good blocker when he wants to. Has outstanding catch radius and great at contested catches. Uh, concerns, his release package, he kind of has the same release, but he's a bigger body receiver. He's 6'4". Probably don't have the same quickness right off the line of scrimmage like his dad had, being a smaller guy. Uh, doesn't have the explosiveness, but again, he's 6'4". He's not one of those smaller, quicker guys, but as much explosiveness he can have at 6'4", the better he'll be. And selling double moves. Now, again, being a taller, lankier guy, that ability to start and stop is, you know, kind of not in taller guys. And the more he can get that, the more twitchier he can get, the better he'll become. But, again, he's I think he's the best receiver in the draft. A lot of other people think he's the best receiver in the draft. So let's get into a few of the plays that I saw from the Michigan game. We're going to start with Michigan. Michigan and national champs, the best competition they saw this year. Let's get right into it. All right, now this is a kind of a, a lazy route. And again, I, I'm going to preface this by saying he did not have great quarterback play this last year. Uh, years prior, he had C.J. Stroud thrown to him, and we all know the story from C.J. Stroud this year and previous years. But this year, that quarterback play was not the greatest. Now, in this route right here, I got it labeled as lazy route. He's running the slant, but the DB has way inside leverage on him, way inside leverage. And at some point, you know, with that being said, if you know you're running the slant, you got to give him something to go outside. You got to make him, give him something to make him give you some room. And he just takes it and just runs a basic slant. The DB jumps it, picks the ball off. He don't even try to protect his quarterback by knocking it down. The DB just catches it and it turns into an interception. And again, I say I say as as lazy route, but you just got to give him something to to work outside. You got to be able to give him something that way. Well, I'm sorry. Got to give him something this way so you can come back that way. And he did nothing. He just gave him straight, bam. And the DB already with inside leverage just jumped it. Michigan got an interception. And, you know, to me, that's a lazy route. But this is the only negative I'm, I'm going to have for him so far. You know, Michigan went on to win the national championship. Stop fade. So you can play him outside. You can play him inside. He can play any position out there. Now, in this one, he tries to give this guy something to move him. Doesn't give him much. And this is where the, the release package is, you know, it's talked about a little bit. We're going to put it in slow motion. He doesn't give him much. He don't give him no uh-uh. Not enough to move him. But, again, what I do like about it is this little subtle arm over right there. That allows for him to, to kind of get a free release, so to speak. The DB doesn't, because they're trying to play catch man. And the DB doesn't get a chance to jam him up. And the fact that he's in the slot gives him more room to work with. Look at the body control. Look at the body control. Now, I don't know if it was meant to be back shoulder because, again, that quarterback play was spotty. But if it was meant to be back shoulder, it's a great throw because he avoids the safety coming over the top. Marvin's in full stride, stride able to get his body, body turned, catch the ball, secure it, and put it away. But let's look at it from the back view, and you can see his body control and, and, and um, full view from this side. Again, the release is not great. 
but he does enough with the hand to get get some momentum. And look at that body control. Ha he's so torqued that his his body is pretty much turned back toward the quarterback from the upper half, but his feet are kind of pointed. I'm sorry, his lower half is kind of pointed towards the safety. That's amazing body control. At six four. Mm. Athletic freak. We got him at the bottom. Now this this is the ability to track the ball. He runs a little rail route, and the ball's thrown behind him. But watch him track the ball, and he's gonna make this catch with this DB just hanging all over him, basically pulling him down. The DB is dove and, and is pulling him down. He still has the wherewithal to track this ball and make the catch. And you can see the flag coming in because the DB was early. You can see, see it even better from this view. QB gets it off. Watch. The DB is pulling him down already. He still tracks this ball perfectly and makes the catch. Now you see the flag coming in because it was obvious PI. His ability to track the ball is, is high level. High level. Probably genetics. <laughs> but this is a classic Marvin Harrison route. Watch him slow walk off the ball. It's almost like a, just walking in the living room. Then he's going to pound that foot in the ground and change directions. Ah. Now he's going to pluck it out the air like most great wide receivers do and then go get some yak. That's classic Marvin Harrison. That's classic something you see his dad do. Pluck, hit on the brakes, and get you a little yak. And again, just keep in mind he's do he's doing stuff like that at six four. The way he was able to start and stop like that, that's that's what smaller, quicker receivers do. Big guys don't don't start and stop like that. He's doing this at six four. So any kind of twitchiness he can show at that size is gonna help him. Cause you don't expect guys that big to be that twitchy. We'll finish with this one from Michigan. Breakaway speed at 6'4". Just going to take this little shallow. And this guy this guy has an angle on him. But he's going to destroy this angle. Watch. Mm -hmm. He took one wrong step and it turned into a touchdown. One wrong step. This guy has an angle. He took one wrong step and it turned into a touchdown. One step up and it should have been lateral and it turned into six. To the point where he couldn't even dive because he was so far behind. But I just wanted to show you a few plays from Marvin Harrison Jr. versus Michigan. We're going to do the second game versus Penn State on the second channel on More Sip to Tally. So if you don't follow me over there, go check out More Sip to Tally ASAP. We'll be over there talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. versus Penn State. And I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love. I appreciate everybody for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And again, draft season is here. It's filmed and more film. Because the film don't lie. Peace.